Yo, what is good, everyone? Your boy Deke back again with another vid. We got the Pittsburgh Steelers signing outside linebacker TJ Watt. You know, just like three, four days before week one of the regular season starts. Shout out to Ian Rappaport. I think he got the info out before Adam Schefter. It was like three or four minutes before. Deal is four years, $112 million, $80 million guaranteed, which totals out to like $28 million per year. So if you guys follow the podcast, follow me on here. You guys kind of know my sentiments about the TJ Watt contract. Concern because may cap our long-term prospects and how we deal with the cap space and what players we can keep, retain, bring in, and whatnot. Just because $30 million to an edge rusher is a little unprecedented. TJ Watt becomes the highest-paid defensive player in NFL history. The two closest guys to him are Miles Garrett at 25, Joey Bosa at 27, and then the third guy is Dexter Lawrence, who's at like 20. So Miles Garrett and Joey Bosa kind of set the market in recent years. TJ Watt has outplayed them up to this point in his career, so he was totally warranted for getting more money than both those players. But I just wonder down the line if the market's going to correct itself kind of like how the running backs did. All those dudes were getting some really big contracts, but a few years go by, we're like, man, the value is not paying running backs in the teens per year. I wonder if that's going to be the case with edge rushers. We'll have to see when the next edge rusher gets paid. Is that going to be Nick Bosa? So we'll see what kind of deal he signs to go back and gauge to see if this was a good deal compared to the market. I think it's a good deal just in general when you compare TJ to Miles Garrett. It's not the full $30 million. Kind of met in the middle because Miles Garrett's getting paid twenty five. He's getting twenty eight. The $80 million in guaranteed. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but you divide that by four. That's $20 million guaranteed per year, but I'm sure that's going to be way more front-loaded with like signing bonuses and whatnot. The deal had to be done. I changed my tune a little bit more. Yesterday, whenever Ben came out and said, hey, I came back for less to sign guys like TJ Watt. So that made it seem like if he's going to come back the following year, he's going to come back on a team-friendly deal because he wants the younger dudes that are up to get paid like TJ Watt. We got Mika Fitzpatrick, a bunch of these weapons on offense like Deontay Claypool. They're going to be looking for contracts. You could even throw Devin Bush out there. Makes it seem like he would be willing to take another team-friendly deal because that was one of the things I talked about was, is TJ Watt going to hurt us with that cap number at $30 million from us retaining guys or bringing in guys or just roster building to a championship type of level? Because we saw what happened with some of these teams in the past that signed edge rushers to high amounts didn't amount to too, too much outside of Frank Clark, but he had Patrick Mahomes. So that's kind of like a different story there. Overall, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I'm uh, I'm definitely more open to it after seeing Ben and some of those veterans come out and say, sign TJ Watt. I think we got a good thing going. I didn't want to rock the boat for this season because at the end of the day, I was like, even though I have those concerns down the line, I would rather have a TJ Watt that's not resentful, that's happy to be there for this 2021 season because we have this window. I think we have a legitimate shot at the Super Bowl. I feel like it would be a waste to not have TJ on the roster when we still have Ben. We still have all these weapons on offense. We have these dudes on defense that are hitting their prime. At the end of the day, I'm happy it's done. We're going to have TJ Watt week one. I think he's going to be fine (laughs) whether or not he practices or not, but that's another story. Let me know what you guys think of this deal. I think it's fine. It kind of like met in the middle between 25 and 30. I know 28 is not too far off from 30, but it's what the market is right now. And you're kind of going to have to sign TJ Watt. It'll be interesting, though, in two or three years, like I said, is the market going to correct itself or is the number just going to keep going up and up with edge rushers? I know the salary cap is going to go up, but that's going to be the difference between is this deal actually a value three years down the line or did we pay TJ Watt too much because dudes like Nick Bosa, whoever else is out there, young edge rusher wise, franchise edge rushers are getting maybe the same amount or a little bit less. That's not for us to really like talk about or dissect right now because I'm just happy we got TJ Watt on the roster, ready to go week one. Let's go win this Super Bowl. Stay chilling. Peace.